Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we went through comparators just as like a super basic introduction to them only because that was the extent of my knowledge. I've now improved a little bit so in this video we're going to be going through this video and coming up videos we're going to be adding some more circuitry to that basic comparator circuit that we had in the last video. So in the last video we had this schematic here which was basically an op amp and then we're just comparing two voltages and then we're just outputting whenever the voltage at the input V in is higher than the reference voltage, then we're outputting and turning on the LED or putting the current here and turning on the LED. So that's what we was doing in the last video. In this video, we're adding some more circuitry to it and we're going to be chucking in a voltage divider. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. When I look at this circuit previously, as in yesterday, I'd be like, oh man, I don't understand anything that's going on there. But I actually understand it now. So it is literally just the circuit that we had yesterday or in the last video uh, here. But the only difference is now at our uh, input to the inverting input, instead of just connecting it to a battery, which is our VCC of four volts, we've got our same VCC here of 12 volts, but this time we've got a voltage divider network and we're actually using that voltage divide network to drop the 12 volts down to 4.98 volts. And yeah, we'll go more into detail into this later on in the video. All right, so let's go through the breadboard. So here I've got VCC here coming in from here, which is 12 volts. I've also got 7.5 volts here, which is gonna be my voltage input. Uh, we should just show you. So my VCC, here is a 12 volts and my input voltage here is the 7.5 volts from this battery okay and my reference voltage is this voltage divided network that i showed you here where we've got our 5 volts so let's take a closer look here if you remember the pinout so we've got this pinout right so our input here is pin 2 and pin 3 so we've got pin 2 and pin 3 here and so here oops I've just disconnected something ah what have we got going on here ah I fudged up my circuit I'm back I confused myself there was a wire that was hanging there that didn't need to be there anyways so what I did what I've done is I've got my two so pin two and pin three so here pin two which is our inverting input is going into this voltage divider network here so at this point in the voltage divider network, we've got 4.98 volts, which is going into my inverting input, which I'm using as my V reference, okay? So as my V reference, which is 4.98 volts. Then here on this yellow wire into pin three, I have my battery, which is 7.5 volts. So when that 7.5 volts, which is my V in, is greater than my V reference, which like I said, is 4.98 volts from the voltage divider network, then the comparator is outputting high and it's allowing current to flow and turning on my LED. When I remove the battery, the 7.5 volt battery, the LED turns off even though I still have 12 volts here going into my circuit. So this comparator now is sensing the voltage and it's going, okay, V in is zero volts. And you know, I could change that so that for example, V in is a lower voltage which actually, let me let me, let me me get a lower voltage and show you. Okay, so I added this little um, breadboard attachment power supply, I don't know what it is, but it has a 3.3 volt output. So if I test the voltage here on my multimeter, I'll show you. Here, so I've got 3.3 volts here. So now if I put this 3.3 volts into the circuit in the same place as that four, uh, sorry, as the 7.5 volt battery that I had before, so I need to ground the right bit. This is grounded. You can see here, so 3 point, what was it? 3.3 3 volts won't turn on that LED, which obviously 3.3 3 volts is more than enough to turn on the red LED. But the whole point is that the input voltage here, so V in is now not higher than the 4.98 reference voltage that I've set. And I've set that using the voltage divider even though if I can just remove this, even though I have 12 volts coming in here from my power supply, so this voltage divider network is 
pretty it's pretty amazing to be honest with you and i'm going to be using it to set my own uh, trigger voltage for my solar panel charge controller in my panel project so that's good okay so we've got 3.3 volts here if i now take out this 3.3 volts and reconnect back in my 7.5 volt battery which is definitely higher than um the 4.98 volts okay you can see here the led turns on straight away it's nice man it is really nice all right so that's it on the breadboard let's just go through it one more time on the schematic just to give you a bit more context so for me looking at these schematics it's just scary to look at but i just need to get comfortable with it and if you're scared of it again just get comfortable with it work your way through it slowly i think it starts to make sense in the end so here's my 12 volt supply you can see here it's going to this voltage divider network and it's also going here into my op amp and it's not doing anything else everything else is grounded right and then i've got my 4.9 volt input voltage which is v in i haven't labeled it correctly with v2 and v1 so this is a vcc or v supply right this is my supply voltage now here this point here is my reference v reference and so you can see that it's 4.98 volts on the simulation because i've got the 10 the 10k resistor and then in total i've got 7.1k here i'll i'll explain in more detail the, the voltage divider network afterwards but basically i've got a network here and i've created a 4.98 volt voltage point here which i've connected to to use as a reference which is at my inverting input so now the op amp is looking at 4.98 volts and it's saying okay when this voltage here which going all the way back is this one here when this is higher than 4.98 volts then the current from the vcc will come this way and instead of it currently going to ground which is what it's doing now it will go this way and go through to this LED. So you can see here we've got 54.8 microamps of current, right, and 1.57 volts at the output currently of the op amp. And so when you can see 4.9 volts, when that reaches 5 volts, the LED turns on, and you can see now we've got 8.6 milliamps of current instead of the 54 microamps. So 8.6 milliamps of current, 10.4 volts now, and then you can see here our, our LED is on. And then when we go up to my 7.5 volt, which is what I've got in my battery, then uh, still the LED still stays on, 10.5 volts, and then the current just increases slightly, slightly as well, 8.69 milliamps. So you can see here that this battery is not affecting the output of the op amp. All it's doing is the op amp is basically just like acting as a switch for this 12 volt supply because this is what's connected to the VCC. No current can enter in these inputs. So this input, these inputs here, both of them, they're just detecting voltage, that's all. Okay, so let's go through how the voltage divider works. I'm sure most of you guys, if you're, if you've, you know, you learn about voltage dividers in your first year, so either you, you have done it and you've forgotten, <laughs> which is bad, or you know exactly what it is and you're gonna, be, and then just you feel free to skip the rest of this. Um, or you've done it and you forgot, is uh, bad or maybe you're new and you haven't done it but yeah let's just go for it so we've got our 12 volt supply that's like a freaking capacitor my bad 12 volt supply and then we've got a resistor and a resistor hey i don't know why my drawing is so bad can i just redo that just let me just redeem myself here oh my gosh mate do you know what i can't use a pen you know that i'm so <laughs> Oh dear, I'm so used to drawing on the iPad. I don't even remember the last time I drew on a piece of paper. This is bad. All right, so you got R1, you got R2, and you got your voltage supply. So the way that this works is, you're gonna take this point here between the two resistors, and you're gonna tap in here and take the voltage out from here, plus minus, and this is gonna be your V out. Okay, so that's what we've done here. I've taken the voltage out from this point here, so this is R1, and then this is R2, basically, both of these together, because I didn't have a 7.1K resistor, so I used two in series to add up to 7.1K. Okay, so how do you choose the values? Well, you decide on what voltage you want out, 
and then you just use this equation v out is equal to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 multiplied by the voltage supply of v in and so in my case hmm what do i should go through explaining this let we'll just let's do my calculations for the resistors that i used and then i'll show you how i came to them so i've got v out is equal to r2 which is 7.1k because it is 5.1 plus 2k divided by both of them which is 10k plus 7.1k so that's 17.1k so we do 7.1k divided by 17.1k let's get a calculator so i just did the calculations uh but i wasn't recording so let's just do it again <laughs> All right, so we've got 7.1K. You can drop the 1,000 because there's two on each side, but uh, yeah. You know, we'll just do it. Let's just do it. Just don't confuse people. 7,100 divided by 17,100 is equal to 0 0.415, right? And then so what we do is we times that by 12 because that's our voltage supply. So times by 12. And then that gives us 4.98 volts. So we get 4.982 volts, which is what you can see here at our voltage point. Cool. So that's how you get the 4.98 volts. So in terms of how you come up with these resistor values, I mean, you could probably do it using some complex maths. I think I remember doing that my first year. But as soon as I realized that there's an online calculator for something, all that maths goes flying far out of my head. I've got no space for it. So I use an online calculator. Let me show you the calculator that I use. And then that will tell you how you can come to the values uh, for these resistors. All right, so here's this website, learningaboutelectronics.com. I mean, you can just type in voltage divider resistor calculator to Google. There's a bunch of different websites. What you do is it just tells you the calculation for it. And then you take your, you want to put your input voltage. So here I've put 12. Let's just remove all of this is it done cool so you put our supply voltage which is 12 volts and then you put the the voltage that you want out so i wanted five volts okay and then what you want to do is you want to put a value of a resistor that you have and then it will tell you what you need for the second resistor so one thing that you learn from every electrical engineer you talk to is that they always say just chuck a 10 kilo ohm resistor on it just chuck a one kilo ohm resistor on it. That's what everyone does. So you just put 10 kilo ohms and then click calculator, calculate. And then it's going to tell you that you now, if you're going to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor for your R1 up here, so this R1 is going to be 10 kilo, then you need R2 to be 7.1 kilos and you'll get 5 volts out. So since I use 7.1, I've got 4.98. If I use 7.14, so maybe if I if I put in an extra 42 ohm resistor, which I actually, I actually do have, I would have got exactly 5 volts instead of 4.98. So let's say I wanted to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor, which you could use. Click calculate. Then it'll tell me that, okay, you need a 700 ohm resistor now, and you'll get your 5 volts by using a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And you could just do that for anything. Like, I mean, if you've got a 142 ohm resistor, Click calculate and it'll tell you, okay, you need a 101 ohm resistor in order to get five volts out. So yeah, I mean, you could do the, you could do the maths. You work, okay, there's that. Oh, this is the calculation. So, <laughs> okay, so if you've got your value for V in, which is 12 volts, you got V out, which you want, which is five volts. Take your V out here, five volts, multiply it by the resistor value that you have. And then, yeah, okay, so that's the calculation for it. It's not, that's not too bad maths. I mean, if you like, if you love maths and maths gets you off, mate, take this equation. But me, I stick to this calculator. Learn about electronics.com. Shout out to them. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I mean, is there anything else I need to cover? Cool. I hope you guys liked the video. If you do, leave a like. I'm learning a bunch. I love all of this stuff, you know, comparators. When I went through it in my second year and we was doing all the gain calculations and just, you know, whenever I think back to my modules that I learned in university, Actually, the only thing I learn about is just a whole bunch of math calculations. <laughs> it's quite frustrating. But in the next video, I'm going to... So what I did was here... So I got this from... Um, I forgot the website name now, man. Let me get the website name for you. Uh, it is electronics-tutorials.ws. So I got this from there. Shout out to them again. So 
I've done the basic comparator and then now I've done one with the voltage divider which is quite cool so here they've got a variable resistor so I might try that and then we've got a DC battery reference which is what I've actually already done we did that in the first video so in the first video we did this using VREF no actually no, we didn't we used the voltage uh, input but it should be should be exactly the same right I mean it's just yeah so we've done that anyways we've done that in the first video this is what we did in this video I think in the next video we'll do either the variable position one or that should just be the same just using like one of these like variable resistors um, and then you can basically change the reference voltage there using this I suppose we could do that I think that's a bit basic though maybe I'll skip that I think I'll skip this the Zeno diode is what I want to do because the linear regulator that I want to build in an upcoming video involves a Zeno diode and I think it involves using a Zeno diode exactly in this configuration to set it as a reference voltage so I think we'll do that in the next video yeah so if you like the video leave a like if you're not subscribed subscribe I'll see you next one take care